Hey, welcome back to Content is Profit. Today, we are in Fun Hacking Live. We are in Orlando in this like four-day amazing marketer event. If you haven't been, let us know and uh, we'll send all the info, but it's amazing. And today, we got the chance to listen to one of the Content is Profit Hall of Famers. This interview was very, very special. I think it was episode 43 or something like that. So this is a throwback. But it was the first time that we interviewed somebody that was outside of the really internet marketer world. And this rocked the world at the time. He's actually a world champ. I'm not going to tell you about what, but if you're a truly OG of Continuous Profit, you should know by now. But anyways, he he was invited to speak on stage in front of 5,000 people today. And in honor of that, we are actually rerunning this amazing, amazing conversation that you should definitely listen to. He actually goes into, obviously, everything mindset, all the way to the weird niche that is making him a ton of money by using, obviously, his content and all his knowledge. So this is a super awesome interview. Enjoy. Okay, he starts asking me about it, and I didn't know them. And he's like, okay, he's like, I'll be right back. And he had this closet where he kept all his belts. Every time he would open them, the belt would, like, just, like, hit the the closet, and we could hear it. And he was like, oh, no, it's coming, it's coming. So he came back to the room with the belt, and he just put it right next to my chair. And he's like, I'll be back at 6.30. You fail? Like, I don't care. Like, get pissed off. Scream, holler. Do it Do it in your bedroom by yourself. Give yourself 10 minutes and let it out. I, I've got goosebumps right now, man. I mean, you guys need to go with me to the rodeos and announce all the rodeos because I'm pretty sure I get a lot more fans. <laughs> You guys are doing that. We've got some hey, fresh I'm new Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening to the before. Content is Profit Just podcast. Listen. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Today, how a rodeo world champ is winning at online marketing. Woo-hoo. That's yes. going to be exciting. This is so exciting. This is not a typical episode, and I'm, uh, I can't wait to get this thing started. But before we get started, guys, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Smash it if you like. And uh, also follow us on social media at BizBrosCo on Facebook and Instagram. That's right, guys. And if you found this episode impactful, which I am sure you will, please don't forget to share it with everyone. And and don't forget to leave a five-star review. Yeah. So January 2020, the energy in the room was at an all-time high. The speaker, Tony Robbins. <laughs> While making his way through the crowd, he handled the microphone to today's guest. We immediately asked ourselves, is he a cowboy? Today's guest is not your typical entrepreneur. I would say he might be one of the coolest people we've had the pleasure of interviewing. His tool of choice, a lasso. His main office, a rodeo. That's right. Today... Whoa. <laughs> Today's guest <laughs> is a rodeo world champion turned entrepreneur with the mission of helping others become world champions as well. Most importantly, he is a Christian and a loving husband and father. That's right, guys. Please take your hats off and welcome rodeo world champion, loving husband and father, and the internet's favorite cowboy, Mr. Tyson Durfee. Wow. Friends was an introduction. I I've got goosebumps right now, man. I need mean, you guys need to go with me to the rodeos and announce all the rodeos because I'm pretty sure I get a lot more fans. You guys are doing that. Yes, well, that was, let's was, make it happen. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was our goal. That was our goal. Yes. We made it happen. Tyson, well, thank you so much for being here with us, man. We cannot be more excited. Oh yeah. And uh today's episode like was of to a rough start, maybe a little bit with the technology, but that's fine. We're here. We showed up. And, uh, and that, that only means it can only get better from here. Only right? better than here. So, yeah, man, I I, I just want to listen to all, to this song like all the time. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So, Tyson, just so you know, we usually have like a a techno song in the background, right? But I mean, we had to honor you and your sport, so we're like, you know, we gotta find a country beat that we can use with you. <laughs> hey. 
Yeah, I listen to a lot of hip hop and rap, rock and roll. <laughs> I listen to the country too. I listen to everything. So just because I wear a cowboy hat, a lot of times doesn't mean I'm only a country. Female. Yeah, no, that's right. That's, that's right. right. So off camera, we're chatting a little bit, and you know, we're gonna get into that little background. And so, so the audience can get to know you a little yeah. bit, right? But like, obviously, you are an athlete. Um, what's your music of choice to like the pregame? You know, the pre-show, everything. Yeah, I, I listen to a lot of different stuff, but typically if I'm getting ready to go, uh, I'm gonna throw on probably like some Kid Rock, Cowboy Baby, that's pretty good. I like some <laughs> of that. Um, but to be honest with you, I have like my whole pregame prep routine and I use music a lot of times to get into my zone and my focus. And, uh, but it, it could be rap, it could be, you know, Snoop or Dr. Dre, it could be, you know, it could be uh, Kid Rock, it could be ACDC. Like at the, at like our World Cup, our national finals rodeo, which is like soccer World Cup. Yeah. They play uh, Back in Black. Uh, for me, it's Oof. an ACDC song. So that's a classic yeah, right there. Anything, anything high energy that'll get you pumped up. That's what I listen to. I, I, I love it because, I mean, you know, we've we've done, like we draw that line between publishing and, and being an athlete because, you know, we play soccer all our lives and uh, – we were able to play in Europe and you know, all these things and you get ready for it. And now that yeah. we're publishing on a, almost on a daily basis, we have our pregame ritual, just like you do with the rodeo, same thing. You know, we put the music on, uh, Fonsi does some pushups. I don't do the pushups. <laughs> and then, you know, we go live and, and it's super fun, right? So I think that's important to bring like that perspective into people that are trying to get yeah, into I this. Gotta bring the, the energy, <laughs> that's right, I love it. Awesome, so Tyson, t like tell us a little bit like, First off, you know, who are you? Like, where you come from? How do you end up doing like this wonderful thing that you do? And then how do you transition onto the online world, you know, in the last few years? And it's kind of crazy, like to it's me. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so interested yeah, right now. It's, it's, so what I do, there's like almost no other Cowboys doing because um, <laughs> it's just like opposites, right? And in my story, when I was young, it's kind of like opposites. So when I was very young, my parents got a divorce and mm. I was really little. My mom went and lived in an inner city urban environment and my dad lived in the country on his farm. And so like throughout the week, I would live with my mom in an urban environment, like riding skateboards, riding bikes, like, uh, you know, in my little gang, I was kind of like had a little gang group of guys. And, and so, but in the weekends I'll go live with my dad and I was like country boy. Yeah. So I was like, I was like both, you know, depending on which day of the week you got me. And, uh, when I got to be in fifth grade, I was in every learning disability class there was. Um, couldn't read, could barely write. Math was always pretty easy for me, but yeah. I was just in the wrong, running with the wrong kids, you know, stealing, uh, that whole thing. Wow. Um, and, you know, drugs and alcohol was all around that area, kind of where I was at. And my mom actually was like, hey, you know, I can't control you anymore. You're not going to school. You won't listen to me. You're gonna have to go with live with your dad, and I'm like, oh man, I don't want to go with my dad because my dad works from like 7 a.m. to midnight every day on the farm. Like that's it. We only work. And long story short, I went to live with my dad, uh, and my dad sent me down. He said, "Son, things are gonna change." He said, "I'm gonna tell you once to do something, you're gonna do it one time, or I'm gonna whoop your ass." I don't know if I can say that on your show. That's, oh, that's fine. fine. You that's can fine. do whatever. Yes. Uh, <laughs> hey, my dad, we grew up that way. We grew up too. that way too. We feel like we feel it. Yes. <laughs> so, like, my dad is like this rock hard cowboy guy, right? And um, I thought he was bluffing. And uh, the deal was, I had to be studying when he got done working at night. And most of the times, he would get done working at 11 to midnight every night. Wow. And I was expected Ooh. to be up at 6 a.m. every yeah. day. And so if I wasn't out working with him on the farm, I had to be studying. And this particular night, I was studying social studies uh, definitions. And <laughs> the last one that I remember was Saga. It was it was a long stories that the Vikings told about the great deeds. I remember reading that and then I like pass out on the couch, right? <laughs> Listen, I'm not used to working hard. I didn't know what it was to work yeah. hard. And I'm like fifth grade and my dad comes in there and boy, he is pissed that I <laughs> fell asleep. And uh, he grabbed me and he whipped me with, we, we have what's called a rope, you know, like a pig and string. Ooh. And he whipped me with his pig and string a few times and he scared me to death. I literally thought my dad would kill me um, if I didn't do what he said. Mm. And from that day on, my entire life changed. Like I was living with my mom, urban environment. You know, we had no money. 
I would go for, you know, literally we would go for a week without electricity, a week without wow. food. Like, wow. My mom was too proud to do like the food stamps thing or didn't know about it. Yeah. But, you know, we just didn't have any money at all. And so I'd sneak around to other kids' houses and eat their food and stuff like that. Ooh. But when I went to my dad, we always had food, but we always had to work. Yeah. I mean, yeah. hard. And when he whipped me that day, um, it changed my life. Like, I, I believe in disciplining your children. I don't believe in whipping your kids the way that I got whipped, but I believe that, you know, you yeah. got to discipline your kids and it straightened me out. Yeah. Within the next year, I had straight A's. I was still in my learning disability classes, but I was gradually getting out of them. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I had straight A's. Uh, by the time I graduated high school, I graduated with honors. Um, I had an A minus average all the way through high school. I had a full ride scholarship to college. Wow. Um, it just changed my whole life. I realized that, you know, I had to work. I had to work, but not only work, but work smart. Yeah. Well, th thanks for sharing with that. I, I, I feel like there's a parallel here because I don't, I don't know. You know, we're from Venezuela, right? So uh, yeah. Yeah. whole different systems, wow. educational system, like different. Uh, but our dad was like really strict too. But I feel the discipline aspect though is pretty the, similar. Pretty similar, <laughs> yes. Like leather belts. But it's okay. We yeah. love our dad. Like we're we're okay. We're fine. We're turning oh, yeah. out fine, right? And uh, just I think like the that work ethic, right? Like that's so important uh, growing up. And and I feel like today that might be one of the things that can be really challenging to to get from from kids nowadays because like. Talk about attention spans, talk about distractions, talk about different options. People like messing with your family environment, right? Outsiders. Um, so thank you for bringing that because I don't think that's like a typical story. Yeah. Uh, and now we can see the result here in front of us, a world yeah. champion, right? Yeah, exactly. Not no. only that, but a successful businessman I, too. I relate to that story a lot because <laughs> I have a very similar story. I mean, I, I, yeah, I got whooped. A lot of times, I'm not gonna lie. So, <laughs> or that grew up in a military school, right? So yeah. his tactics were a little on the military side, right? He's like, <laughs> I mean, you need to do your bed, and if it's not perfect, he's like, I'm gonna throw it all on the ground, and you're gonna like start all over again, right? And I remember this one day that I had to study. I think they're called prepositions. I didn't learn them at the end of the day, but I had to study them. <laughs> and we we were taking like ma like martial art classes. It's called Tai Chi, and I remember my dad comes and he's like, okay, he starts asking me about it. And I didn't know them. And he's like, okay, he's like, I'll be right back. And he had this closet where he kept all his belts. Every time he would open them, the belt would like, just like hit the, the closet and we could hear it. And he was like, oh no, it's coming, it's coming. So he came it back to the so room bad. with the belt and he just put it right next to my chair. And he's like, I'll be back at 6.30. And I was like, what? Like, do you expect me to focus? Mind games. Oh, my gifts. I was like, do you yeah. expect me to focus with this thing in my chair? Yeah. Uh, whatever. I mean, at the end of the day, I didn't learn them. I got my, <laughs> my butt whooped. But, I mean, it, it's a good lesson, right? For me yeah. specifically. I love, again, I love my dad. I am extremely thankful for the education and the discipline that he, you know, that he taught us. Yeah. And uh, we, we wouldn't be here. This is a that appreciation moment. Like, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the education that our parents provided. Here's the thing, we gotta be thankful for what our dads did for us because they did it to us when we were young and real life will do it to you when you're 30. Yep, real that's right. Real life will kick you in the ass, man. And the people that shelter the kids too much, they're setting up for failure because when they get out of the real world, the real world will whip their ass. And unless they're ready to take it, and they got a thick callus like on their mind, they're yeah. gonna like think that everything's coming to an end. Yeah. When it's not that big a deal, all you gotta do is pick yourself up and keep climbing and keep going. You know. And, that's right. And I, that's really the definition of all my success is just the yeah. keep going attitude, never quit, never yeah. give up. Keep I, hustling. I agree. I agree. I love that. Um, my dad actually has a saying that I remember him telling my older brother, not this one right here, another brother that we have, <laughs> when he had his first kid. He said, "Look, Mario, is better." for your kid to cry when he's young than for you to cry when you're old. And I was like, whoa. Like, I, I mean, I was like, yeah, I was like 12 at the moment when I heard that. <laughs> and I, I still remember that. I'm like, wow, that's yeah. intense, but it's so true. I love it. Yeah. So, so Tyson, like, so you go, how, how a kid from the city, right? Obviously we, we know the start of like this, like hardworking, uh, dude, how do you get into rodeo and why? 
Yeah, so my dad is a trainer. My dad actually trained the horses that a lot of the guys compete on, right? So okay. we grew up, we would train like 30 horses a day. Um, and the thing about training horses is like, there's a lot more work other than just riding the horse. Like that's like a third of the work. <laughs> the other third is like cleaning up all the poop. Yeah. Like, horses <laughs> crap everywhere, Every, man. On all the time. <laughs> yeah. So like cleaning the stalls, you know, uh, cleaning up after the horse, brushing the horses, feeding the horses, you know, putting shoes on the horse, like everything revolved yeah. around taking care of these animals. So from the time you got up at, you know, 6 a.m. or 6.30 out the door, like it was take care of the horse to take care of the horse. And a cowboy will always take care of his animal before he eats. I'll show you a real cowboy. Somebody who leaves their house, if they've eaten before their animal, they're not really a true cowboy. Cowboys always feed their animals before they take care of themselves. That's just the way it is. Wow. And it taught me that I had to live for something more, right? Yeah. I had to yeah. live and take care of other things that a lot of people, a lot of things depending on me. So we get up, we feed the horses and I would work, you know, and my dad, it was kind of like borderline, like slave labor, you know, <laughs> I, I remember being like uh, 10 years old and being midnight and still working at midnight, but yeah. I had to be up at six, but I'm thankful for that. I would never do that to my kids, but it taught me that, Hey, if I want to get ahead, if I want to get ahead of this guy, simply have to put in more effort than that guy. Yeah. Right. So when I started roping and competing, I thought, man, all right. I know that when I graduate high school and I join the pro tour, I need to have some cash, like serious cash. Yeah. I'm thinking, how much do I need? 30 grand. All right. All right. 30 grand. I need to say 30 grand by the time I'm a senior in high school. And I, I, I start most of my days, 4 30, 5 a.m. And I would practice uh, my tying, which meant I would practice what I do in the rodeo yeah. from like five to like seven. And then I would feed all the animals really quick. And then I'd jet off to school. And as soon as I got out of school, I'd go like shoe horses, which meant like I would like trim their feet and do all yeah. that stuff. And I'd make a few hundred bucks every day after school. And then I would go home and work for my dad. And then after I got done working for my dad, then I would, then I would, you know, get a, about four or five hours of sleep and then start the day over again. And I did that for years, but I realized something. As I began to watch my bank account grow, I knew that the effort that I was putting in that the other high school kids weren't, I seen that there was just like a separating factor. Yeah. It was not easy. I had to work my butt off and I failed astronomically many times, but I never, I never like, like let that failure, like get to my mind and say like, Hey, you're never going to make it. You're, you know, this, yeah. no, I'm just going to do it again. I'm just going to do it again. And it's, it's so important. And if I could tell a, a young person nowadays, it's like, who cares? Who cares if you're heavy and you're in middle school? Who cares if you're scrawny, skinny little kid? Who cares if you have no money because I've been there? Yeah. Right? I, I think that's so, matter. that's so powerful. Point. Sorry, go ahead. I, no, it doesn't matter, man. Yeah. Who cares? I, I think your, your story in so many levels is so powerful, not just yeah. like for any athlete or any kid out there, but also for a lot of entrepreneurs out there, right? Because. Uh, a lot of what we've seen and and maybe because we come from that background of being an athlete too, you know, same thing, like waking up early, maybe not a, as early as you, but the same <laughs> thing that like we will go practice after school for two different teams, right? So it's like a four hour, three hour practice and then go back home and do the homework and then go to, you know, same thing. So it's, a, it's that hard work mentality. And then I see a lot of parallelism with entrepreneurship, right? Because same thing, like we're, you're learning constantly, uh, you know, things get thrown at you you're not ready for a bunch of stuff, right? And everything that's gonna go south will go south every yeah. single time. So you gotta adapt pretty quickly. So your life story uh, kind of like doesn't teach you just, doesn't teach just kids, but it teaches also entrepreneurs. And I think it's a great example that we need to all follow. Yeah, yeah, no, I love how, I mean, your story is literally that of putting in the work right away. Yeah. I feel yeah. that nowadays, and we've mentioned this in previ previous episodes, a lot of people just don't want to put in the work. I think they have a, I don't know, they live with the mindset or perspective that entrepreneurship is a game that you come into and you're going to have a quick success and you're going to be done yeah. for life, right? And it's not like that. It's literally that, again, in soccer, what we what we say is you got to be the first one to get, get on the field and you got to be the last one to leave practice, right? And I'm sure it's the same what you were talking about. You were waking up early, putting in the work, And after years, right, and that doesn't mean that you didn't fail because you said it yourself, like you failed a lot, <laughs> right? But, and you said something, you never got that fail, you never let that failure get to your mind. And I love yeah. that, right? Because a lot of people, 
they get so discouraged, right? Like when they 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 face an obstacle and and then they decide to quit. So what would be your like how? My my question to understand, you know, I, I want to understand your mindset and how, how it works. Like how do you not let failure get to your mind? Yeah, so the one of the things I teach in my mentorship program for other ropers, uh, in my it's called No Limits if you see the cow, but is yeah. is the fact that you have 10 minutes. You fail, like I don't care. Like get pissed off, scream, holler, do it, do it in your bedroom by yourself. Give yourself 10 minutes and let it out. So many times when people make a mistake, yeah. they, they just want to like sweep it under the rug and like mm. nobody can see it. Nobody can know mm -hmm. that I made a mistake. And then it just festers and it festers inside. And then eventually after three or four, they're stacking failure instead of failure, let it go, release it, get rid of it, start again. And if you fail again, let it go, release it, get rid of it. We have this thing like cowboys, like if they do bad a lot, sometimes they'll like throw their hat in the dirt and like stomp on it. Or sometimes they'll break stuff. Like we got tempers. I mean, yeah. we're just like any sport in the world. Like you get yeah. pissed off, but I give you 10 minutes to get over it. Yeah. And then I want you to reflect and look at the reason that you're doing it in the first place. If you're doing it to impress, you know, Cindy over there because you think she's hot, it's not going to work out for you. Yeah. No. If you're doing it because in your soul, man, in your soul, you believe that's what God has you doing or that's what you should be doing, then it's, if it's in your soul, you're going to just keep chipping away at the sculpture. Rome wasn't built in the day. We've all said that. It takes time to create art. You want to become a millionaire? Trust me, you're gonna get, you're gonna go broke three or four or five times in the process <laughs> until, you learn, until you learn it, man. Yeah. You just and and I, like I've lived in the backseat of my car. I've been broke twice. Um, I've had people that told me I would never make it. I've had people that told me I would make it, and I didn't care what the other people that told me that I wouldn't make it because it, my dream wasn't given to them. Yeah. It wasn't they. It, they're not the ones putting. The, I'm putting in the work. Yeah. So I regulate my goal. I really and I always fall back. With, what the hell am I doing this for? Like, why? Why am I doing this? Do I love it? Do I want it? Do I want to leave legacy wealth for my kids and their kids and their kids? Do I want to have a name that's written in the books forever? Yeah. Right. Beside my name. And if I want that, that's great. And as long as I'm doing it for good, I think it's phenomenal because you can inspire and motivate and and push other people to become the best. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's that's fantastic. I mean, I love how y you brought up the why so many times, right? Again, and there's a famous book, Start With The Why, Simon Sinek. And, but at the same time, I want people to notice, again, the hard work that you put with it, right? Because yeah. especially now, I'm seeing, you know, like I, I used to be that, that soccer player that would go to sleep with some motivational speeches on the background, <laughs> thinking that I'm gonna wake up all motivated. It's like, oh, ready to crush it. And it's not like that. Like sometimes I'll put the speeches and I'll wake up and I was like, oh man, you know, I'll still have those, all those fears and insecurities. Like it's gonna happen, right? So I think having that a strong why, it does help, you know, that motivation, but at the same time, and we, I'm coming back to it again, that discipline of putting in the work. And I love it because also, I mean, you were at Funnel Hacking Live, right? That's that's the whole yeah. intro that we did, right? <laughs> Funnel Hacking Live 2020. And Tom Bill, you was one of the speakers. I and I, I wow. didn't know Tom until that day. Yeah. And really? yeah. Wow. And now for me, I was like, who's this guy? He's so cool. <laughs> like, he's so awesome. And yeah. immediately started following everywhere. They're not and just the pants, the whole thing. The whole speech was awesome. <laughs> the whole speech, yeah. <laughs> And dude, I couldn't get away with the pants, guys. I couldn't wear those pants. Yeah, right? no, me neither, me neither. I feel like he's the only one that can do that. <laughs> I'm on the minimalist side. I have like one pair of shorts and that's it. Uh, but, <laughs> but he said that what made humans great was their ability to adapt, right? Mm -hmm. Their ability to change. And I was like, dude, like that is so impressive, right? And I think you, I mean, you are a testament to that, right? Going from the city, the suburbs, not you know pretty much a, a mess of a life uh to yeah. go into the discipline side of it and then realizing that if you put in the work everything would would go your way yep you know the moment my life changed uh, like i've had like these pivotal moments in my life as i look back and as you guys know we're at funding hacking live it was strategic that i was in that moment for tony to recognize me that was yeah. completely strategic yeah um The sec it did I didn't know that it was gonna happen. I dreamt it would happen, but the second time my life changed, 
I used to break into these abandoned houses all the time when I was like 15, 16, right? I had read this book uh, for, uh, by Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. My mom got it for me. Yeah. We had, like I said, man, we had no money. And I'm like, man, you know, all I got to do is buy assets and get rid of a lot of abilities. And, you know, like 20 years, I'm going to be rich, you know, or yeah. whatever. <laughs> and I used to break into these abandoned houses because there was a lot of them where I grew up. And I would break into them, not to like steal stuff or anything like that. But I would like break into them and look at them. Now, listen, they're abandoned houses with like yeah. boards over the windows. They're not like somebody's home that's exactly. clean. And like there's like uh, homeless people and crack pipes and stuff in the inside. Wow. And I break wow. into this house one day, man. And I'm, I'm looking around and I'm trying to conceptualize in my mind. I'm like, man, I could I could flip this house and I could make like 50 grand, 60 grand. Little did I know, I didn't know anything about drywall <laughs> or you know, any of that. I'm just yeah. like, I could flip this house and make yeah. a bunch of money. And I break into this house. I'm wading through mountains of disgusting trash everywhere, like disgusting trash everywhere. And I feel this box poke me in the side of the leg, right? Grant, I'm 16 years old. I'm 36 now. So it's 20 years difference between then and now. Yeah. I feel this box poke me in the leg. I'm like, man, you know, that feels like something new. And if you know anything about trash and going through trash and looking, you can feel the difference between something that kind of feels new and something that's like all crumpled up. You yeah. know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm going to open this bag of trash up and see what's inside. So I open this bag of trash up and I pull out this, this bag and it's like unleash the power within Tony Robbins, like what? 20 cassette tape from like 1993 or something like that. This is the year 2000, 99 or 2000. So it was pretty old, but it still had the wrapper on it, right? At that point, CDs were starting to be a thing and cassettes were kind of out. Yeah. But I had a cassette player because I was old school and I didn't have any money. So I devoured every one of those cassettes and it changed my life completely. How wow. to take care of my optimism, how to look, you know, be positive. For, fast forward 20 years, 20 years later, I get to speak to Tony Robbins in front of 5,000 wow. people at this at this uh, event, and I made it a personal goal of mine to get to get to know him, to be in his sphere of influence, to you know be involved with his charities and things like that, to where I can begin to have somewhat of a relationship with yeah. him. That day when y'all see me in front, of him, I couldn't tell him that whole story because it was too big. But when I broke into that house and I found that box of cassette tapes. It changed my life completely. That, that's uh, that's wow. incredible. I, I got goosebumps. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. <laughs> and for, for those listening, like uh, you know, he was telling that story, and my jaw just like dropped. I'm just like here with like wow. dry mouth, just because like uh, yeah, I. I Wait, so, sorry. Before, uh, hold on. Hold on. What, what, what your Let, thoughts? No, together? no, no. It's they're all, they're all together already. So, <laughs> Tyson. <laughs> so, a lot of people struggle with with asking for help, right? And I, and I feel like you were in this moment of 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 your life that you literally man manifested help, right? And it, it manifested in like this box with Tony Robbins and you know, everybody can can follow whoever they want, but like that was the person that you were following and the, the, the person that was your North, right? So I, I think it's incredible that the fact that you, in your mind, you would like just visualize your, your end result. A lot of people don't do that because then they get worried about like what the what ifs, right? The whips that we like to call them, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, you were just like so focused on your end, right? And maybe that changed over time, but you were so focused that this thing came to you. And on it, like you were not expecting it, but that changed your life. And now look 20 years later, because you step, you, you took one step, you listened to all the cassettes, you applied action. Then you were put in different environments that made you level up constantly. You were okay with leveling up and failing, right? And getting it out of your system and and trying it again, and look at where what's not what's where are you now? So sorry, that was my thought. I, I, oh no, man! I, I, I just I, wanted to get it out there because like it's just the fact that you can manifest it and and this thing just happens, right? And uh, not all has to have an explanation. Yeah, I don't. Man, I love this. Is probably one of my favorite stories I we, oh, we've time. had in in the podcast. <laughs> not gonna lie, I I got goosebumps. And I mean, growing up, our mom would always tell us. Everything happens for a reason, and it's always because of the best of reasons, right? Again, obviously, that comment comes down to perspective. We can perceive anything that we want mm. as positive or negative. You know, you could have easily ran into that situation, those cassettes, and be like, wow, who was so wasteful to throw all these cassettes here and leave? 
or yeah. you could took the positive approach that were like, wow, thank you so much to whoever threw this away. I'm going to take him home and I'm going to learn everything that I can. So first of all, I absolutely love the story. And I get, like my brother said, it doesn't really need to have like an explanation, just the fact that you took action through it. And again, talking about change, right? We were talking about change. I recently started asking my question, the question of what drives someone to change? Like, what is it? Because, because you see, and, and I don't, I don't want to sound judgmental here, but I see sometimes people, right? That I'm like, wow, like you could do so, so much more, mm. right? But what is it in their mind that just let them, you know, like just, just keep on with their life? Whether, I mean, and it doesn't matter. They might be happy. I, I don't know. I don't know everything, all the context around their life, right? But I'm like, wow, like you could be, you have so much potential to do this. And then you see somebody else like, what is it? And, and some people that have potential, they talk to me and they are, You can tell that they're just complaining, right? They're being negative on a lot of stuff. And of I don't want to like be like, hey, no, but you should do this X, Y, and Z. Like we unsolicited advice is not always good. Um, but I'm like, wow, like what is it that they need in their life? Like what experience, you know, or what, what do they need to come up with, you know, Tony Robbins cassette for them to get inspired and change? What do you think is that? What do you think make people Man, change? Yeah, that really, you know, change is a difficult thing for a lot of people. And there's many reasons for that. You know, the other people think, the, 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 what will other people think about me if I change? I mean, I won't be in my cool little group of people anymore. Caring what other people think keeps most people from being their true selves, mm. right? They wear the crap that they think is cool. They spend too much money for it. It keeps them broke. Yeah. They buy a fancier house. I lived in a horse trailer for seven years. Mm for seven years wow. while I save my money. I don't give a damn what anybody thinks. Yeah. I'm going to do me at 100%, not do me at 50% because of what somebody else thinks. Yeah. That's the number one thing. The second thing is fear of failure. People get in these lanes in life where they're like, this is what I've done. This is what I've always done in the past. This is what I got to do for the next 30 years. Without fail, If you do not adapt, if you do not grow, you will get left in the past every single time. Within my sport, and you guys have probably seen it in soccer, the techniques that worked 20 years ago probably don't work a little, is a little different now, yep. different footwork. You know, I, I mean, I follow a bunch of uh, uh, soccer people yep. on Instagram. They're always doing these badass tricks. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that probably 30 years ago, nobody did all that stuff, yep. you know, because it didn't show off as much. And so things change. My sport has changed astronomically. I became a world champion at my ninth trip to the national finals rodeo. Imagine this for a second. If you made the world cup nine times and failed eight. Yeah. That's, that's... Would you have the fortitude to go and win the ninth? Or would you listen to everybody yeah. else and say, Oh, you know, they failed eight times. They're probably going to fail again. You know, their coach isn't a winner. They're not going to win this time. And so, I had to change. I had to change my approach. I had to change everything. And really, I learned that if I did not change my life, I, I might as well not live the rest of my life. Because yeah. I'm not comfortable uh, with just being, you know, one of the good ropers. And, and granted, I'm, I've been one of the best for a long time, and that's great. But I want to be the best. Yeah. Yep. Or, or at least the best that I can be. Yeah. You know, if that gets me another world championship, that's great. If it doesn't, that's okay too. But I'll be damned if I will not give a hundred percent. Yeah. And the thing is, I see those people too, man. Uh, family members that have alcohol problems uh, or just not living in their purpose. You know, they, they do something because they make just enough money to keep them comfortable when they don't know that comfortable is really, it's really dangerous. Yeah. I was going to say that exact yeah. same word. <laughs> um. And so, you know, I think those two things really keep people held back. And mm. a lot of times in my life, I, 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 I got all these mentors, right? And there, I never met him. Like I never met him. I don't mm. know TD Jakes, but I, but he's been a mentor of mine. I don't know Tony Robbins, but he's been a mentor of mine. I don't know. Well, I do know Russell a little bit, uh, yeah. but from ClickFunnels, but I don't like really know him. You know what I mean? Yeah. We hung yeah. out one time, but I would ask myself if I'm in a pressure situation, What would Tony do? What would mm. Russell do? And if I'm doing what I think they would do, then yeah. I'm probably doing the right thing. If I'm not, then I need to change my actions to get the result that I actually want. Yeah. Right. 
we all know. I mean, if, you, if you're in a stressful situation with your business and you said, what would Tony do right now? And you went and researched it. You could find the answer without even talking to Tony. Yeah. But you can guarantee that's probably what he would say. Yeah. And so I've used that my entire life, whether it was working on my speed and agility or my business or my savings or whatever. I would ask, you know, what would Dave Ramsey do? What would Tony Robbins do? What would TJ Jakes do? You know, yeah. what Eric Thomas do? Like I had all these things. I love it. And it would always keep me on the straight path, you know? Yeah, I love that. I mean, again, I'm going to bring another speaker from Front of Hacking Live to the table here, Ryan Holiday. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, 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 we had a book from his at home. Uh, I've never read it. And then after I met him, after, after I saw him on Hockey Lab, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm sold again. Like, I'm going to just <laughs> Need to go, go and it. research this guy. And he talks about mortality, right? Like, he, because he, he's a philosopher. So it's like, okay, if, if you see yourself in the, your, your deathbed, yeah. um, what do you want people to think about you, right? And that's going to drive you to take the same actions. So I'm relating this to what you told me about the mentors. And it's pretty much the same, right? Like, because you're looking at your mentors, which pretty much represent where you want to be in the future, right? So taking yeah. in consideration where you want to be in the future, what will be the actions that you need to take to get there, right? And I'm seeing like, yeah. wow, like that has, that relates so much to what Ryan Holiday talks yeah. about of your deathbed, right? Like, how do you want people to, rem to remember you? And when you t ask yourself that, you're going to be like, okay, then I need to do X, Y, and Z action so I can get there instead of, let's say, be comfortable and maybe spend the whole night watching TV or do so something yeah, like right. that, right? Yeah. I, oh, so, I love that. I love so that. So how, how does someone pick the mentor, right? Because like nowadays there's, there's so much noise, right? Like, I mean, the, the podcast is called Content is Profit. There's a ton of content out there, easily accessible for a lot of people. And uh, we had that issue where like we couldn't, we couldn't figure out who was the person that we needed to follow and then started filtering. And, you know, for us, we, we had a system that we finally got somebody to do it. But how would you... How you? How did you pick your mentors? Was it just by accident, right? Or is there is there something that you look for or you recommend people do when they're looking for these people to to follow? I'm gonna tell everybody right now that you can always judge a tree by the fruit that it bears. Mm -hmm. Look at the fruit. Do not do not be misguided, right? And with you know YouTube and Instagram and all this stuff. You know, people can make it look like they're the real deal, right? People can really make it look like they're the real deal. Yep. And, you know, maybe they will be someday. Maybe they're fake until you make it method. And, <laughs> and my wife's in the music business. Um, uh, we've seen that a lot over the years, yeah. but always judge it by the fruit. You know, anytime I try to find a mentor, they need to have the same beliefs as me. I'm a high energy, high energy individual and, and how I do it is I follow and research people for a long time. I've got two, two people that I've worked with. Well, I've got several people that I've worked with, but um, there's two people that I've worked with that have really helped me. Uh, one, guy, one guy is named Craig Ballantyne. Um, he owns a company called Early to Rise. Um, they have a podcast, him and Bedros Koulian uh, own nice. a podcast. I watched his information. He gave me, he gave me a million dollars worth of advice just on his Instagram channel. Wow. wow. And I hit him up one day on DM. I'm like, hey, man, how much is it going to cost me to, for you to coach me? And the way it broke down, uh, I got one call once a month. I got weekly emails, yeah. right? Because he could facilitate a lot of people within the emails. But it cost me, you know, $1,500 for one hour. Wow. So the number one thing is if it's not a stretch for you to afford this person, you don't want them. You have to. It, it has, has to be a stretch. stretch. Yeah. It has to be painful. Because the more pain that's associated with it, the more you will actually pay attention, right? Yeah. The second thing that I do is I don't work with anybody for longer than six months. Mm. Six months, um, I'm the kind of guy that I like to learn a little bit from a lot of individuals. I work with people for six months at a time because I don't want it to be a lord and a master uh, or a lord and a servant relationship. I want it to be get everything they got, learn as much as possible, go on to the next person, right? I love that. Develop that good that good relationship, stay cordial, um, but go on to somebody else. That's the way that I do it. Yeah. Now, I, I have people that I mentor that I've had longer than six months, yeah. but they keep getting value out of it. Yeah. And I would tell you, if, if maybe, maybe if you, depending on what level you're on, 
then maybe you need a year with this person. But the moment that you quit receiving value, get somebody else. Yeah. You have to. I, I, I love the way that you approach it exactly and, and specifically the six months. I think this is the first time I see this. Yeah. And it looks like you adapted like the way you co completely understood how you work and how you receive information, right? And yeah. uh, and then you broke that mold of like maybe what everybody else is saying, like you should stick to that person, you should stick to those three or whatever, right? And then you're like, okay, I, I need something that works for me. And sometimes a lot of people, when they're trying to find out their own solutions, and we see it with like content frameworks and publishing frameworks and all this stuff, right? They're trying to model every single thing like you know for example gary v or you know say the same russell like you're trying to do the same thing but the the important part here is like can you grab those frameworks and make them your own just like you yeah. did finding your mentors and learning from all these people so i thought that was a, that is very very unique and 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 interesting to me because that's the first time i, I hear it so i feel like we fall in that bucket too yeah i think we fall in that bucket First, we, that pain when buying, yes, we've definitely 100%. experienced that. I mean, we've told the story. Do you know who Steve Larson is, by any chance? Yeah, I sure do. Yeah, yeah. with ClickFunnels. Yeah. He used to be with ClickFunnels, now doing his own thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah correct. Yeah. So we went to his event once, and he pitched his mastermind, right? His big offer. Yeah. And we were sweating, literally. <laughs> we are sweating in the table because we wanted it so bad because we knew that that was gonna take us to the next level, yeah. right? But the resistance to take action was so big at that moment, sweating, shaking, doubting yourself, right? Yeah, can can like we do 30 it? Thirty grand, or something like that. Correct. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. And, and we did not have that money, right? <laughs> but we were, but we were yeah. like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do like, it. let's do it. And mm -hmm. that has led us to take so much action to implement actually what we're learning. Yep. Yeah, and this, this is the point where I want everybody to realize something, that growth only comes through stretching yourself. Whether it's mm. putting up the money to be in this mastermind group, that's fine. But be careful. There will be a lot of guys that just take your money and mm. run. Yeah. Right? So do the research. Know the person. If they have books, read it ahead of time. But constantly stretch and grow yourself. Like, I, 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 I read, uh, I can't read very well, but I do read a lot. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I'm dyslexic, as you guys know, because I would, I had this call at a different time than y'all had it. And, uh, no worries. I'm, just, I'm ADD, but the thing is, is you just have to stretch, man. If yeah. you want to learn a new technique, you got to be thrown in the fire. Yeah. You don't look at the fire as a bad thing. The fire is a good thing, right? Yeah, I love it. Without being stretched, without being burnt, without being, you know, financially tapped out you're not gonna grow yeah that Maybe is so true of losing everything that you got that finally teaches you how to save yep yeah i mean we, I we twice <laughs> yeah exactly and, and you know look at you i mean you, you it looks like you put yourself in these situations where you have to perform right you have to take action and uh, we like this saying you know putting yourself between the sword and the wall like that uh, you have to move you have to do something because if not that's it it's, it's game over and uh, you repeated that pattern over and over and i'm sure that you do with your students over and over too right that's why we love sports man yeah that's yeah. true <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You love it when you're back against the wall and you have to do something in the last second of the last game. Yeah, I'm not, I, I, yeah, I got so many stories I can tell you guys. <laughs> we're yeah, gonna, yeah. we're gonna have to do again part two, yeah, part definitely. three, part like, two. We, we can do this. <laughs> old stories about you know those those moments. I love it. I, 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 I actually, want... let me tell you a really funny story, just yeah, really yeah. quick. Let's about do it. Stretching yourself. Right? Let's do it. So, uh, yo hablo español y falo portugués, right? I, I speak a little bit of Spanish. I speak fluent Portuguese. When I was learning Portuguese, I, I fly to Brazil. Yeah. And it was right after our like World Cup. I'm going to call our finals World Cup or NFR, National Finals World Cup. I fly to Brazil because I want to party and have fun and meet Brazilian girls and all this crazy <laughs> stuff, right? I wanted to do this. And they are crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm married now. I, have, I cannot talk about that. <laughs> I did fly to Brazil and I, I'm sitting with this group of individuals, like this big group of individuals. I'm the, I'm the freaking the white boy. You know, I'm, like, I'm Irish, man. I got red hair. <laughs> and i'm like thinking of this sentence and i really want to eat this bread and the bread is on the other side of the table yeah I, but i gotta, you know when you're learning a new language you have to like set yourself back you have to think about the sentence how you're going to say the sentence and mm. then say the sentence yeah. right and i hadn't learned how to enunciate the word the portuguese uh conjugations properly and so i'm like oi amigo paso o pau para mi por favor and, and they're like what did you just say <laughs> 
paso o pao para mi por favor and the whole table started busting up laughing <laughs> and there of course you know every, i i don't drink but everybody's drinking and they're you know it's just a fun nighttime experience yeah. right and they start busting up laughing they said you know what you just said and i said yeah give me the bread pass me the bread come on and they're like no you said pass the dick for me please <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, you said, and not only did you say, you said it twice. You said, "Pass the dick for me, please." Twice, and the funny thing was, was pone is bread, yeah. pow is dick. Yeah. So I had to, I learned that the wrong way, but stretching yourself is good because I didn't care. Exactly. But it it separated me. It made me different than every other American that they'd ever met in their life. A guy that was trying to learn another language and could laugh at himself when he was an idiot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I I like that laugh at yourself. I think so many people take themselves so so seriously that yeah. when something like that happens, they're they get discouraged. They're like, oh no, like I don't want people to laugh at myself, you know, and, and they take it so personal. Again, I relate to that story so much because <laughs> yeah. again, we grew up in Venezuela, right? Or our first language is Spanish, and we came here for college, and we had the same issues, right? Like waiting to say something translate it in your mind and they speak it to everybody else like by the time i was gonna ask for bread everybody already ate the bread i was like oh man you know and so like i relate to that so much and i have i have a lot of friends that they went through the same thing but they yeah. they shut down when they get these challenges or people laughing at them and they're like oh i don't want to speak in public i'm like people don't care like you're giving them yeah. so much more importance right like talk about living to a hundred percent of yourself right like you yeah. said i was like Oh, yeah, I, I think that's <laughs> a that's a that's a common problem when you know when we talk about the content or the things that you want to do yeah. you're just publishing right getting it out there right like we, mm -hmm. we we've seen that you're super active on social media you have these IGTV videos that have thousands of views and people that you're adding value to it but if you never like put yourself in that situation where like you go out and actually start publishing and you actually go and start talking to people it might feel like a different language completely right And yeah. imagine if like we just get hung up on our language and our accent and we, we sometimes write things that are not correct. We say things that are not correct, but that's okay. That's us, right? And people that follow us and, and go through that with us, they're going to create a bond so much, so much stronger. So in everything that you do, your story is a great example of like just laugh at yourself and that's it and move on and no, nobody's going to remember. Like we we talk a lot about collateral revenue right like with the relationships and the content and everything that you do in your business but in that experience you had a different type of collateral revenue growth. Right? you mean. had you had growth <laughs> you had new friends you had people that will probably remember you for the rest of their lives and they're gonna laugh <laughs> yeah. about yeah. it right you remember that story for the rest of your life right and and then you were able to teach from that story. So all of that, there's so many positives, you know, just like Tony says, like stack the positives, right? There's so many yeah. positives out of that one negative and uh, that it, that a lot of people sometimes I think like miss the mark. Um, so thanks for sharing. And I'm sure like, we need to do a second for sure. Like the, just to, the, just the, to the hear your story. The next episode is gonna be in Spanish. <laughs> the, And yeah. we just need to do like a, an episode on just storytelling because you are great at it, by the way. Yeah, we're both like, uh-huh. Like, tell me more, please. Yeah. Just tell me more. <laughs> I want to know more. I want to. I, I want to transition a little bit on. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Before we transition, before we transition. Do you know what they, I'm gonna be transitioning for? Uh, uh, maybe <laughs> I don't know. But I have a. This question is gonna be a little okay. polarizing, right? Yes. I, I, I'm just super curious, right? Because we we're talking about stretching yourself and mm. you know stepping out of the comfort zone, right? What do you think about second place trophies? Ooh, <laughs> and yeah, medals, yeah, medals yeah, for everybody. So, yeah, so <laughs> second place trophies are a funny thing. In my sport, you know, uh, in my sport, most people don't have money. Like most people are, are humble beginnings, work hard, you know. And for me, if I had to risk uh, not getting a paycheck over winning second or third for the first part of my career, I would go get second or third every time because I knew first place paid 5,000, but second paid 3,500 mm. and 3,500 would get me enough money to go to the next competition. Now, it wasn't until I had enough cash in the bank that I could afford not to win anything that I began to look after first place. Mm. Now, I became a world champion at 32, but had I developed the mindset that I'm here for first 
and I'm here for championships at the beginning, I would have had three or four world championships by now. Since I won my first world championship, I've been in contention for another world championship every single year since. Wow. Amazing. I, last year, one of the guys that I teach and I mentor beat me out of the world championship by two wow. tenths of a second over 10 days of competition. You, you have to tell him your rate is going to go up like 200% after that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, I, I don't, I don't, I don't really believe in like, th you know, participation ribbons. That's not my way of doing things. I, I just, I just can't, I can't honestly look a child in the eye and tell them that I'm doing right by them by giving them a participation ribbon. Right. Yeah. Hey, that's awesome. I'm glad you got out there and you know what? You sweated and you worked hard and you did it and let that sweat be the reward that you need. Right. Oh, I agree. I, I parents. The problem is these parents want, want to give them the participation ribbon for just being in there when the parent really just needs to tell their kid they did a damn good job. And if their parent would say that to the kid, they wouldn't need the participation ribbon. Yep. You know that's what right. I'm saying? Yeah. And so, I'm kind of like, I've done, I've been on both sides of it. You know, I, I paid all my own bills since I was 12 years old. Wow. My own clothes, my own food, my own everything since I was 12 years old. And the more I believe, and I might be wrong, everybody's got an opinion, that's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The more we teach our people that they should get rewarded for not, you know, winning, the more we're raising a generation of individuals that when life hands it to them, they're going to get their butts kicked. Yeah. Yep. And it's going to be harder when they're 30 and 40 and 50 than it is when they're 12. Right. Yep. I love what your dad said. It's better to cry as a child than to cry when you're a grown man. A hundred percent. Yeah. We, yeah. just so you know, we agree a hundred and like 10% with you because I mean, the participation in that sport should be reward enough for you to like do it, right? Like uh, that's it. And then I mean, but the, the, same, the, the, same. the effort, right? The, like the, the parents have to praise the effort and then they say, okay, how can we make it better? But you cannot get, uh, like you said, a participation medal or something. Cause like that just breeds compla co complacency, I yeah. guess that's the word, right? Mm -hmm. And then the kids are gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna get something just by showing up. And that's not life. Like you're saying, like that doesn't translate to life. Yeah. I have a daughter. My daughter's three years old. I have two daughters. Uh, one is Praise. My old daughter is Praise Royal, like Praise Royal, like Praise the Lord Royal. <laughs> and it's also a family name Royal. Uh, and then my little girl's name is Risen, uh, like the king is Risen. Yeah. Love uh, it. Beautiful. And so I, I'm very much a Christian. Uh, I'm a little bit, you know, I, I don't cuss a lot, but I, I naturally, the natural me likes to cuss. <laughs> but when I look at my kids in the eye, I tell them, listen, my, my daughter's kind of got this thing. She's three years old and she says, daddy, we can both be winners. And I said, honey, that's not the way it works. And I, and I tell her this all the time. I said, yeah. baby, there's always a winner and there's a loser. And it's okay to be, it's, it's okay to lose. Yeah. Just because you lose doesn't make you a loser. Just because you, you know, make a mistake doesn't make you a failure. It's only a, a loss or a loser or a failure when you quit without the goal that you want. As long mm. as you keep going, you have a puncher's chance to win. And I, it's it, it it to when I look at my daughter in the eye. If I was to tell her we could both be winners at a competition, I would be lying to her face. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's not the way the world is. Yeah, I, yeah. Thank you for that question, Fonzie. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate. It, that. Yeah, that's good. That was good. <laughs> so well, I guess now I can transition. Yeah, now you can transition. Now the transition is gonna feel like you know not a good thing because this question was amazing. Okay. But anyway, so I, th I think we can go along that way just for a little bit. Obviously, uh, our hour is kind of running out. I want to be super respectful of your time. But I want to transition Amen. into the business side, right? Because yeah. I, we, we touch on your athlete side, on your mindset, on, on the things that, that you do to, to set you apart. I mean, for God's sake, you're, you're a world champion. I mean, incredible, right? Mm -hmm. So what are those things that you took over on your business side and, and tell us a little bit, like, what are you doing to help? Because I'm very interested. You teach something, like, very specific. And we talk yeah. when we talk about, uh, yeah, and, and I remember, you know, when we kind of exchanged some messages or what I saw was at, at least six figures teaching this thing that is very specific. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and when we talk with a lot of businesses and people that, that come to us, we're like, hey, how do I monetize? How do I monetize my, my thing? And we go, like, go niche. And we had that same problem, right? Oh no, that's not gonna be enough. So I wanna, I wanna, I want you to tell us like, what do you do? What do you teach now? And and how did that like became a thing? Yeah. So what I'm current, I do. We do a lot of different things, right? So and I'm gonna keep it very basic for yes. for a moment, and then I'm gonna get into big picture stuff. So if you're an athlete, if you have a name, uh, even if you don't spend, 
a few years building brand build brand build brand deliver value don't ask for anything don't charge for anything you can't come at people with a price before you produce a product right yeah. so take time build brand up front 100 i spent 10 years uh in the rodeo industry building my brand i knew that i wanted to transition at some point into personal motivation personal inspiration and i thought <clears throat> why don't two years ago i start doing these motivational videos start writing more do blog style posts and ig and just see where it goes. Yeah. Well, I mean, it just is blew up. I mean, uh, I went from maybe 50,000 followers to, you know, 100 and I think 12,000 on IG. I got to 450,000, I think on this Facebook, yeah. but I was, and I never asked for anything. I never asked for a dime. I was building brand. I was providing value year in and year out. And I just didn't ask for anything. Now, once you've provided that, that value, then it's okay to ask for, uh to offer something you really don't have to ask just offer it yeah make sure the offer is structured the right way right make sure you understand your audience and what you're offering fits the audience and you can use psychological triggers triggers to pull that offer out of people i'm in a i'm in a sports uh in, environment so if i deliver a product that helps on mindset that creates product productivity in the arena i can sell the crap out of that yeah if I'm teaching people, you know, how to swing a rope and how to throw a rope to urban people, that's going to be difficult. That's a cold audience. You got to, you know, and anybody out there, if you haven't read, you know, dot com secrets, expert secrets, any of traffic secrets, copywriting, any of that stuff, <laughs> yeah. you got to read it because yep. it's really, really good. I started my whole journey because I had hundreds of people messaging me saying, man, can you train my kid? Can you help my kid? And I'm like, no, I can't because my time's so valuable and, yeah. I, and I'm already 200 and some days year, a year on the road. And if I take the days I am home and, and give it to you, then I'm not training, then I'm not with my family, you know, and everything yeah. falls apart. I'm like, how can I do this? How can I do this? And I decided, and we have other business. We have a belt buckle company. We own uh, real estate, have rental properties, have a lot of other things. But I'm like, how do I do it? And I, and I ran across on YouTube, Gary Vee. Gary Vee. And I don't know Gary Vee. Like I yeah. listened to Gary Vee the first time. I'm yeah. like, this guy's an ass. I don't like this guy. <laughs> He's so stupid. Um, but then I, I run across him again and he said something really smart. And he was like, I don't care if you want to do anything in the world. It's the internet, dick. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm like, like, duh, it's the internet. And so I'm like, and then I see this ad by Russell Brunson. It was like talking about his expert secrets book. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to buy this. It took me six months to figure out how to build a landing page. <laughs> I would get up at 5 a.m. every single day. I'd work on digital media for two to three hours before my day started. So I didn't take out of my training. I didn't take away from my family time to take away from my other businesses. Wow. Within, uh, within 10 months at working two hours, about two to two and a half hours a week on my digital business, uh, I did over $100,000 in sales. Yeah. And wow. there was no, there is no like products, like it's all info products. Yeah. And I don't care if you're a carpenter or you're a real estate agent or what you do, man, you can go online with your business. There's so many tools. If you're willing to get your ass kicked for about six months, <laughs> go to events and meet people. You can find people to help yeah. you, but you can build a landing page. You can connect it to click funnels. You can build a funnel. You can build a course out on Kajabi or yeah. members pro or whatever you want to do. And you can start selling what you have. And it's so much fun. Yeah. Like, I, I think that so much fun. I think that's a mm -hmm. big element too. Cause you know, yeah. I mean, six months, you know, two hours before everybody gets up, right? Like it has to be fun too. I mean, you, I mean, obviously you grew up with a different background too, of like the working, the hustle, like the, the, the work hard uh, environment. So you add that mentality to I'm doing something that is providing value, that is solving a problem. And on top of that, I'm having a blast. I mean, who wouldn't do that? Right. And, uh, and I feel like a lot of people have trouble trying to find that thing. So the, it took you a second to find it. Like, and, and it was like, I feel like it was in front of you this whole time. It was, it totally was. It, it was in front of me because the people were telling me what they wanted, but I just didn't know how to get it to them yeah. because I'm a cowboy. I can barely open an email. How the heck am I supposed <laughs> to develop something online to sell to hundreds and thousands yeah. of people? Like, how is that even going to happen? Well, I just started walking. 
Like it just started chipping and crawling. I learned one thing. I built my first landing page myself. It sucked. It was terrible. Then I I met somebody who was in the industry by putting a post on Instagram. And then he introduced me to somebody else. Then I hired that guy full time. But it's important to know that every time I have a business or I start a business, that business has to pay for itself. I do not pull money from my other businesses to fund this business or that business or any business. From the beginning, it has to make money, right? Yeah. And once I got rolling, I, I've got two people that are on t- full-time staff. You know, my digital guy, which he he builds my funnel, he builds my land, he does all that stuff now. And then I have a customer service lady, but it made money from the beginning. There, it wasn't like my real estate stuff where I had to invest like $200,000 yeah, to make yeah. 5% a year. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like now that I know about the digital media stuff, it's like, I've loved real estate my whole life. I love it. It's great. There's a lot of tax benefits and write-offs and things that are associated with it, but damn it, you got to borrow a lot of money and it's difficult to get rolling. Whereas yeah. this immediately, Bam, immediately I made, I remember the first time I made like 30 bucks, my first sale and it went through my Stripe account and automatically got downloaded to my bank account. I'm like, I didn't do anything. Like (laughs) I have this video and these people love this video and they paid me for this video. Like once I shot it, I had like 50 bucks and shooting the video or something. And it sold like hundreds of times. Like it would, to me, it was like another light switch went off in my head that and I'm like, why isn't my brother doing this? <laughs> and then you're trying to my get brother, everybody yeah. into it. You're like, come on, like this, yeah, this is I, the way. <laughs> I don't care if you're selling semen for cattle. Like you could build a funnel <laughs> to sell semen for cattle if you wanted to. I'm sad. I know that sounds stupid, but you could do that. You could do anything. I'm sure. I mean, and, um, yeah. I mean, we've seen some like of the examples. Man. Sorry, sorry. You were saying. No, I mean, guys like you guys are just, you know, I just hope your influence continues to grow because more people need to do this and, and get involved with this lifestyle because it's, it's, it is a lot of work. You can't replace yeah. the work, mm-hmm. but once you get rolling, there's a freedom to it, you know, and, and as long as you're creating the content that you need and putting the videos out there and have a good process and a framework yeah. for everything. But, but you know, you, no you, you say, there. you say it's a lot of work, but I, I do feel that everything is a lot of work. I mean, go to college, yeah, right? Yeah, it's like, for, I mean, you're in there for four years, not making any, any money I, related to the thing, right? Uh, this, I have, I have a dream for you. Or I have a thought for you guys, how you pick your mentor. If your mentor is telling you how easy it is to make a million dollars online in six months, just don't listen to that guy just because he has a Lamborghini in the background. Oh yeah. Uh, or, or he flies, you know, he's posing on a private jet or whatever, you know, just don't listen. It's not about the money. It's about a lifestyle that's yeah. free. Yeah, right? I, I and, agree. And it, I, I, no shame on this, but what got us in the game, at least what got me, I'm going to admit it. I have to, I saw an ad with a guy with a Lambo. And I, really I, 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 know, I, know, I was in college. I was in my last year of college. And I was like, I, I, I want to make hey. money. I want to be free. I want to live life in my own terms. And I was like, you know yeah. what? Okay, let, let's buy the program. We didn't get the Lambo, guys. <laughs> but yeah, but, there's no Lambo. But that's when change started, yeah. right? Because yeah. we, we got a little taste from a freedom. We, we, got a t- we started this service, social media marketing at, at that time. And I didn't know how to sell. I didn't know how to build landing pages, but it gave me the belief that I could do it, right? And once I had that belief that I could do it. Full disclosure, though, like, they are not our mentors anymore. Exactly. From a long time. (laughs) Full disclosure. (laughs) Those people are smart enough to know that maybe they don't even like Lambos, but they know if they pose with Lambo, Uh, they can get more people to buy their stuff. That is That is true. There's truth, there's truth there, but. Yeah, yeah, but I I agree. Pick your mentors, you know, wisely. And. I think we we are at a point where where we understand this game better, and we have been I'm gonna say we have been blessed to find the right mentors, right? We have the pleasure, you know, to connect with people like you, yeah. dude. Like I, I'm mind blown by your mindset and your story. I think it's amazing. Yes, and I hope I'm 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 certain that this episode is gonna inspire inspire other people that are gonna listen to it and they're gonna be like, man, you know what? I can take my skills or my knowledge online and i can make a living out of this but they're gonna know it knowing they're gonna do it knowing that they have to put in the hard work 
Yeah. And I, and I think I think we, we spoke about this on the, sh on the other show. Sometimes a lot of people share their message just like you are right now, you know, with the hard work and stuff like that. And sometimes people leave and they leave you and they don't they don't continue to listen to you. And a lot of people hit on their uh, on themselves because they're like, oh, my God, stay. Those that stay might be less, but those that stay and they're like agreeing with your message. Those are the ones that you can really impact like you've done with everything that you've done. So I, I think that's also like a big lesson here because a lot of people might feel discouraged that when they say their message out there and they see two likes or one person watching or maybe two or five, but imagine yourself in speaking in front of five people in person. That's That can be really challenging, but those are staying there listening to you and you're adding value to their life. So again, it's all about yeah. that positive stacking. I've, I've got sweaty armpits from speaking in front of like three people. So <laughs> you, you, you just put yourself like, I, I, I love that, you know, like put yours, imagine five people right in front of you and you're actually making a change in their life. Yeah, That's really powerful, yeah. right? But we're just so used to those vanity metrics like oh but they got a million followers i i, I want to have a million followers as well it's like hey man you gotta start at one right yeah. you gotta start at one that's exactly yeah. what i was just gonna say you gotta start at one and you know what listen to your audience you're gonna like if you have like five followers right now and you start out and you post pictures of your puppies and your dogs and you you know doing stuff with those and you get like three likes but then you post a picture of you like i don't know doing a thousand jumping jacks in 27 minutes or something like that and it gets a bunch then you know which direction you can need to flow yeah the, the thing you got to do is that direction that you want to flow you have to make sure that fits who you are as an individual yeah as well mm -hmm. don't just do it for the likes or the videos or the follows or any of that stuff make sure it's you as an individual and just dive into it man and you know what i, I hate the word influencer because we're all influencers that's true we have kids we have friends We have cousins, we have brothers, and, and even if it's not on social, you can influence anybody, right? I don't care if you have one friend. If you have one friend, you can influence that person for the better. So that's yep. the message I bring day in and day out. I will spit it to the day I die because I'm a Christian, and I, I truly love people. I do. I awesome. love it. love people. Awesome, man. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. How can how can our audience find you? How can they connect with you? Because yeah. after this, I'm hopefully, I, I really hope that people will start like following you and connecting with you. Because what you do is yeah, amazing. Uh, on IG, Instagram, it's at Tyson Durfee. On Facebook, uh, at Tyson Durfee. Twitter, at Tyson Durfee. Um, right now, I just have a pro I have one product. It's kind of like my side hobby, and it's and uh, it's teaching people how to rope, right? And so, uh, any of you people want to learn how to rope, go to NoLimitsMentor.com, and I can help you out. But uh, other than that, you know, in the future, I want to do a lot of mindset stuff. I want to do some performance coaching for, you know, sales people, for athletics and certain things like that. But I'm going to save a lot of that stuff till when I retire from full time, uh, you know, professional rodeo. How many you know, like, how many more years do we got you in the rodeo? Yeah, <laughs> as long as I'm one of the best in the world, I'm going to keep going. You know, it's I don't want to put a year on it because I don't want to limit my, you know, it might be yep. next year. It might be five years. I don't know. You know, I'm 37 and uh, I'm blessed. A great family that my wife, my wife supports me so much. Um, and, you know, just as long as I'm healthy, thank you, Jesus, that I'm healthy. And yes. stay healthy. Um, and I'm going to just keep going. That's amazing. What I love. That's We, all, we're going to have to go see you in action one day. Yes, I, I would love that for sure. We got to we gotta catch the shows. <laughs> I love it. So we have a little bit of a li like last question for you. Uh, obviously, the show is called Content is Profit, right? And, and we really want to encourage people, like we've been in that position where we're like really, really, really scared to start anything, right? Yeah. The business. The, the judgment, the fear the of failure, judgment, everything. The judgment, the accent, everything, right? So uh, what, like, where would you be without, without publishing? Man. Man, I'd be that girl that sits at home with like 27 cats, you know, that don't have any friends. That's right. <laughs> no offense. I love, I love cats. Uh, but you know, truly the, the truth is, is you have to look at publishing your content as value for other people's lives. Like you have wealth buried inside your mind and in your heart that you could give to somebody else and share with other people. And the more that you just keep it locked inside, the more that you're starving the people for the knowledge that you have. And really for me, one day I realized like, I'm like, did Jesus ever do anything by himself? And I was like, no, 
he was always out helping people, preaching to people, healing people. He was always a community. The community was everything to him. And it was always about the other people. And that's the way I, I went from like publishing like content like once, two weeks or three weeks to like almost a daily thing was because I was like, listen, if I get a great thought and I can tell a story off that thought, I'm depriving people and from helping them. Right. Yeah. And I switched it in my mind. I said, you know what? I, if I'm truly a Christian and I love the Lord, then I've got to be like that person. I got to be like that individual and I got to put it out there yeah. and I'm not doing it for money. I'm not doing it for cash. I'm doing it to try to help people. And the longer you keep that message inside your head, the more you're harming society. So get it out, Amen. put it to the world. Amazing. Yeah, thank you so much. That that was great. We're gonna we're gonna leave that as your action point, guys. Like, go ahead and and put those thoughts that you have in your head. Attach out there a story to, to it and, and send it, it to there. the world. Uh, yeah. Perfect, Tyson. Don't leave yet. We got two more minutes. But with that being said, guys, thank you. Whoa, whoa! Oh. I, I don't have the right <laughs> song for this, but it's okay. We'll do this one. Let's go. <laughs> yes, guys. Go ahead. Don't forget to subscribe uh, to the Contents Profit Podcast. Uh, follow us on social media at Biz Bros. Go on Facebook and Instagram. That's right, guys. And if you found this episode impactful, which I'm sure you will because it was extremely exp- impactful for us as well, don't forget to share it with everybody. And we'll see you on the next one. See you guys.